I'm Aaron, and this is Sega Media Productions giving you a video game review. Now, Sony Entertainment and Santa Monica are bringing us the exciting conclusion to the North Saga in God of War Ragnarok. So, in God of War Ragnarok, we take place a few years after the events of the first game, in which we have followed the titular character of Kratos after his complete destruction of the Greek pantheon back in his, home wor uh, his homelands, and has somehow found a way to travel into the Norse world, where he has found a way of semblance of peace, and have also found his way of making himself a new family, trying to take care of his son, Atreus, and following the footsteps of where he can go and just both be a father and a man who is running away from his past. Now the story of God of War Ragnarok does take place during the starting the beginnings of the great um, calamity of Ragnarok which is supposed to happen, the great uh, Norse apocalypse, heralded in with a great winter that has covered all of Midgard. Uh, Atreus and Kratos are now in their deeps of trying to train and deal with the uh, conclusions of answers and mysteries that has been left over from the past journey, where they have taken the ashes of their beloved Fae to the highest point of all the realms, what had turned out to be Jotunheim, the mystical land of the giants, and where also Atreus has found out his origins, which lies within the giants themselves, and the name of the mythical figure known as Loki. Now, Kratos has always been a challenging and far deep character in most video game uh, uh, series out there today, where he first began his journey as an angry god of war, bent on trying to gain revenge over those who have treated him wrong, specifically within the gods of his own world and all the events that has traumatized him, from having to slaughter his first original family and all the betrayals that have laid up towards that in general. But now, within the Norse pantheon of both God of War and God of War Ragnarok, Kratos has found some semblance of trying to find ways to deal with that bloody past, as he has become a father, and this has profoundly adapted, uh, uh, changed him completely, where he is no longer trying to feed off of that anger, and as well as is trying to be a true uh, figure of interest for his son Atreus. Christopher Judge has brought new depth of Kratos in his performance. I absolutely am truly proud of what I was able to see and play through in his journey. I can't praise enough. This is something that I'll also uh, uh, imagine to be Oscar worthy. Now, Sonny Soldier does not at all phone in. His journey as Atreus as slash Loki is one that is one is definitely one for the books. Uh, he brings such a lively interaction as both trying to figure out in the footsteps of this great father warrior figure and his own unique steps towards his own journey becoming a man and a god and, a, and an individual who tries to do his best for all those he cares for. Now, also following in both Kratos' and Atreus' uh, um, journey, we are following the, the journey of other unique characters, such as the goddess Freya, who was once an ally to both these two in the past game, but due to the death of her son, Baldur, has become an antagonistic force that threatens both of their lives and their journey as, uh, as we go into Ragnarok itself. This performance is brought to life beautifully by the talented Dan uh, Danielle Bet uh, Basidi, and is something that is just truly magical and heartwarming to see. Now, talking about two characters has been in the backgrounds of both in the video game and the minds of all the players before, uh, in part, the figure of Thor and Odin are two forces that are brought into this game in unique and interesting angles. Ryan Hurst brings such a unique aspect to the God of, uh, to the God of Thunder uh, in this particular adaptation. Um, it has uh, unique angles that are, has uh, unique twists within his journey in this uh, in this particular entry itself. Uh, this particular version of Thor is not one that you usually typically see. Uh, forget the versions that you saw in Marvel's uh, adaptation 
or video game or other video games or movies this particular rendition of Thor is actually pretty close towards the source material where he's an individual that is a true take a uh, force of nature and very much a uh, an individual who has their own unique struggles trying to deal with the deaths of the sun from the past game due to Kratos and Atreus's uh, way of, of dealing with the other Norse pantheon as well as his unique relationship with his father Odin who is played outstandingly by uh, um, by uh, Richard Schiff I cannot speak too highly uh, highly or highly enough about the performance of Odin in this game he's truly a figure that brings unique depth and intrigue in this role uh, this is definitely not a character who you would think uh, would necessarily fit as well as he does in the um, version of God of War, but it outstandingly does. Now, in God of War Ragnarok, the elements that are following within the gameplay itself happens to be that of the over-the-shoulder camera system of hack and slashing in an open-world expansion of level design that allows players to go backwards and forwards throughout the uh, expansion of the story elements and the side missions that are a plethora throughout this title. Now, the gameplay of God of War right now focuses itself around the elemental weapons of the Leviathan Axe, the uh, Blaze of Chaos, as well as the shields, bows, and other unique um, armors and, uh, and upgradable um, attunements that surrounds both Kratos and Atreus, as well as the other um, unique uh, features throughout their um, journey in this game. Uh, basically, uh, those particular tools or instruments are, of course, upgradable due to the unique um, aspects of what you might find within the world itself, as well as the uh, customization of attacks and unique armaments that it goes within particular slots, and an upgradable tree that both uh, Kratos shares with not only Atreus, but any other playable uh, characters throughout this entry that are done through the, oh, the unique dwarves of Brock and Sindri, as well as uh, those of individuals they've encountered throughout the journey on this game in this title. Uh, within this uh, God of War Ragnarok, uh, gameplay is expanded um, not only by the unique um, elements that are entered in this particular title alone, as well as other unique uh, weapons or uh, armor systems, uh, but also the unique angle of being able to play with characters such as Atreus himself in certain levels des of design, so it adds a unique feature of not as much as the powerful elements that you get with playing with Kratos' father, but the unique transformative angles and quick um, sh sharpshooting angles that Atreus brings in this game. Uh, platforming in, in, in God of War Ragnarok deals primarily with uh, the unique uh, puzzles and improvements that you find throughout the world and the different nine realms, as well as being able to utilize the Blaze of Chaos to be able to transverse some of how he did in past entries, but more of a directed angle towards which you're able to see um, due to sort of specific um, areas within the environments. Everything in God of War Ragnarok is specifically attuned towards the gamer's immersion in the series. Uh, puzzles and unique um, missions or developments throughout um, gameplay uh, uh, ability has to di dive deep into the concept of her. It helps you understand what is going on with Kratos and Atreus and other characters in this story and throughout their entry in God of War Ragnarok. A unique and interesting angle that God of War Ragnarok takes with this gameplay has to deal with the character AI system that is uniquely tuned within this title. Uh, characters such as Brock, Sindri, Atreus, or uh, Freya, or other characters that might come within this um, within this journey actually have expanded content and a greater role of, a uh, uh, of availability in both com in both gameplay and story. Some of the most challenging aspects of God of War Ragnarok has to do with the expansion on character of the enemy system in this um, title. Uh, certain characters utilize uh, elemental aspects such as Bifrost that adds unique uh, dangerous element of being able to explode on contact due to how much or how little you might have uh, engaged with both Atreus or uh, or Kratos has accumulated in, uh, in the battle itself. 
Now, one of the drawbacks, unfortunately, in God of War Ragnarok has to deal with the fact that a lot of what was already introduced in the last title is carried over specifically in this one. There's very few to little um, changes that comes from that concept. Uh, most, again, the one of the better, uh, better aspects that happens to be with the expansion of character AI and the addition of being able to play with the character of Atreus, but that is basically it. Also, we have to deal with the concept of certain boss fights within this game. Even though there are a plethora of different bosses to encounter in this title, they don't nearly have as much of a, uh, I would say, challenging aspect as you once found in the last title itself. Um, there is an expansion on certain variations of, of, of boss fights, with some of them being multi-tiered, but that is not nearly as much as you would think in the other um, variations that comes along in it. God of War Ragnarok is just as beautiful and, and, and breathtaking as it was in the last title itself. The expansion of the world and the story that goes around in it is one that truly sucks in the player themselves. Being able to actually experience the beauty, wonders, and horrors that it attributes to all nine realms is something that is outstanding and a joy to experience. Uh, I found myself especially being uh, taken back by the beauties that surround and, and interesting aspects that surround the, of the realms of Savaltaheim or Nifedelir, as well as that of Vanaheim. Especially Vanaheim, specifically from the aspects of being able to transverse the concepts of night and day, thanks to to certain uh, pop points that you'll find out towards um, a little in, uh, later into the game's uh, play itself. Unfortunately, one of the aspects that actually do keep Rag uh, God of War Ragnar from reaching those greater heights as it should have all, uh, uh, outstandingly uh, found itself be um, in being comes with the form of the f a concept of Ragnar itself. Yes, this is the exciting conclusion to the Norse series, but much of what you would think would be the main focus of the concept of the War of Ragnarok in God of War unfortunately takes a back seat towards the personal character developments that happens with Kratos, Atreus, and certain other unique in, uh, in, um, individual characters in this title. Uh, it doesn't necessarily feel as grand as it is, as it or at least could have been when you're dealing with a concept that happens to be the climatic apocalypse that's supposed to affect all nine realms. Thankfully, God of War Ragnarok is a very long title, and there is, even after playing the main story itself, there is a great multitude of different and unique missions and aspects to find within in-game content, where it deals to either unique bosses or enemy types that you get to find and encounter, or just unique story elements that are trickled here and there throughout um, both Kratos and the rest of his party's members' journey in Ragnarok. Bear McCurry also, like he did in the last game, adds unique depth and entry with his composing of the music that goes in God of War Ragnarok. I absolutely love listening to his music and as I went throughout this journey and I find myself usually taking more and enough of these of the story and the soundtrack back home with me, both in this game and out of it. I also had to give my heart warm thanks to Corey Barlock. His direction in this game and his predecessor is outstanding and it definitely revitalizes the story of God of War and I can't wait to see where it goes from from now. In general, I found myself yet again impressed with God of War Ragnarok and have to give it an amazing. It's not as epic as it possibly could have been if it had worked on those story elements of the war itself and certain other unique tweaks that could have been highlighted from this last entry, but this is still an amazing game that everybody in the world needs to take on. But here you go. That's my review for God of War Ragnarok. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. And hit that bell down there for the, at the bottom for notifications. We want to hear from you and give you more and more content. As always, I'm Aaron, and this is Sick Media Productions. See you later.